none of them have ever said, oh, we don't want to go. If they do say that, I'll be a hard line. I said, look, we're going, get ready. And if you don't come, I'm staying here until you go. Because I've got plenty of masses to go to today. Thankfully, at St. Charles, I've got this. I've got more masses at times. So if you don't go now at 10, we'll go at 11. If you don't go at 11, there's, there's one at 4, there's one at 5.30, there's one at 7. You tell me which one you go, but we're going. Is it better just to make it one time? Yeah, it's happened, but we don't, you know, could we mix it up, not because we have this decision to mix it up, but the practicalities of life, sometimes you, you've got to go to different masses, and that's common sense, and it happens in every family. Okay? Yeah. I've got a question about praying and coming to the yeah. Mass. Coming to the Mass is becoming like a habit, like a yeah. routine. We're coming to do something and go so We're not feeling that we're doing anything apart from a routine. Yeah. So how can we, cha how can we change that? Yeah. And praying, uh, especially, for example, with the Rosary. I used to be a big fan of the Rosary. Yeah. But now I'm feeling to, it's becoming repetitive. repetitive. Yeah, yeah. Like and for, like doing like every day we'll try to pray one decade of the yeah. with the kids, but it's becoming repetitive rather yeah. than feeling like praying. Very so good questions. We... Very very good questions, and this is where you have to find the balance. We have to have routine. We have to have habit, but then it becomes boring and repetitious. And so, what I've worked out, and again, this is not something I've said. I've got to work something out. It's happened organically. So my kids actually. I shouldn't say this, father's not here, but that some, my kids say, well, I like this priest and not that priest. I like that mass and not that mass. So we go, I go, we, my wife and I, we go to the masses which we know we, where we'll, which will connect best for the kids. Okay. There are some priests my kids really like. I'm not naming them. They just say, boom, we're going to go to his mass because we like him. Sometimes we mix it up. My wife likes to go to the Melkite Church once in a while. We like to go to St. Joseph's, St. Jerome's here at Punchbowl because there's a Lebanese priest there now. We mix it up a little bit, okay? With the rosary, I've never said we're going to pray five decades of the rosary because I think that would kill them. So, but what I do, I have one decade for the boys. I haven't given the girls the one decade yet. Uh, my wife does the one decade with the girls from time to time. My oldest boy said to me at the beginning of the year, I'm not praying the rosary with you, Dad, anymore. I said, why not? Because I, I want to do it when I want to do it, not when you want to do it. Okay, okay. And you said anyway, there has to come a time when I have to stand on my own two feet, and I'm standing on my own two feet. So, all right, okay. Come. Stand on your own two feet. Good. All right. So, so the, the, he just trusts that you've done the right thing, and they've, they're picked up picked it up and they know it's the right thing and they understand why it's the right thing and they're going to do the right thing for themselves. So, yeah, look, your, your, your questions are spot on and it's a big problem. Uh, but when they get older, you, we, they will know that what's important is that yeah, you've got to have feeling in the prayer. It's got to have meaning. And they'll add that themselves because they say, this, we have to be praying with feeling and intent, you know. And when you pray, you probably do have that feeling and intent. Maybe we need a session about uh, how to pray because I reckon praying the rosary is not only the, it's, it's not the only way to pray. So Absolutely, to pray. Uh, and, and that's what we're missing. We so, only know how to pray the rosary. So my my oldest son said to me, too, I'm 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 doing the Divine Mercy Chaplet from now on because it's easier." All right, I'm not going to argue with you. If you're praying the Divine Mercy Chaplet, fantastic. Good, go, go pray that. Yeah. Choosing, they've got the ownership of choosing which prayer or which, you know, I want to hear Daniel and the Lion again. And so Dad will read <laughs> Daniel and the Lion. Or I want to hear Sam, you know, different stories. Yeah. Different yeah. Choice. 
Yeah, that, look, that's a very good point. We do fall into the habit, it's, okay, it's the rosary. Look, the rosary is fabulous, but we've got so much more than the rosary. It's options for young kids. In a, if you look up the apps, you can just type in Catholic prayers and you can choose what you want and you download hmm. it. And there's an audio. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, how many? One more question, yeah, Joanne? One more question, yeah. like you do with your boys, that's what I do. We're going to church, no questions asked, mm. get ready, let's go. But my problem is, is how am I going to keep that control mm. when they go okay. to university? And this is it. This is a great question. You see, we've got to move subtly from this control, you're coming to church, that's it, boom, where they, where you've then, while they're coming because you're telling them to come, you, you make them understand why they need to come every week. And so they understand it so that they will move as young adults with that understanding and agreeing with that understanding to come themselves and go themselves. So at the moment, when I'll say, uh, I'm just starting this brand, look at me recently. If you guys don't want to go, that's fine with me, don't go. But uh, you don't have to answer to me. After you're going to have to answer to Jesus. And then you're making us feel guilty. If I don't, and if they don't go to church the whole day, you know, I feel really guilty for not going to church now. I'm like, but that's your problem, not mine. Well, it's not a problem to make them feel guilty. Yeah, and that's what I don't want them to feel. You have, we, we all have a conscience that tells us when we've done something right or wrong. And the guilt is actually an alarm bell for our own good, mm. you know. Uh, but, like, yeah, it's a, your problem is common. Your problem is common. And, it, and we're all in that boat. Uh, but th th I'm telling you what I believe is the best, probably the only solution. Make them realise why you're going to Mass every week and, and, and let them understand that reason and agree with that reason so they will go themselves when they're old enough. Why do we go to Mass every week? Because, one, it's in the commandments. God asks us to keep the Sabbath holy. Two, because God wants us to be a family. We worship as individuals, but really we're a family. God creates a family. The, the church is a family. We need to be publicly worshipping God, not just privately because we're meant to worship together. Three, we go not just to hear the word of God and to he read the Bible. You can read the Bible and hear the word of God at home. We go to receive the Eucharist. And you can't get that at home. You can't get that anywhere else. Okay, and make them understand the importance and how, how precious the Eucharist is. If that doesn't work, I don't, know what, I don't know what else I can say. Okay, I really don't know. Just, yes, be that, in the end, if your kids go decide to, I'm giving it all up. If they do, just say, hypothetically. What you have to do in response is not to hate, not to cut off. But to stand there and be that pillar of good example. Because you know what? A lot of people, not all, but a lot do come back. And they come back when they see meaning and integrity. You know, uh, when was it? I was at Westpac before I started at St. Charles. My nickname was Weirdo in the office. I worked in the legal services of Westpac. I was Weirdo because I went to Mass every lunch. They found out. Where do you go for lunch? Oh, I was embarrassed, you know, it was hard for me to say it. I was walking distance to the cathedral. So I go to 110 Mass every lunchtime at St Mary's Cathedral. And this guy named Anthony, who was a Catholic, but, you know, he was nominal. You know, he was part of the crowd that called me weirdo, but it was not, it was a funny title. It was done in friendship. It was, they didn't call me weirdo because they were being nasty. That was my friendly, funny nickname. And Anthony said to me one day when we were sitting at the table processing documents, he said, you know what, Robert, I can't do what you do, but I really admire it. I said, well, thank you very much. I wasn't being a hero or trying to show off, but I wasn't, that wasn't something I volunteered. I was keeping it private. When they found out, they found out. And Anthony said to me, I, they admired it. So your, parent, your children will admire you at least if you're doing the right thing, if you're living a life of integrity. And they might not follow that path, but they're not going to come back to you if you don't have integrity. 
but they'll come back, they may well come back to you if you do stand for something and you have integrity. People come back. The church knows that. Even our school system knows that. A lot of the kids leave school within 18 months. They don't darken the inside of a church for a lot, many a year. The attendance rates are three to four percent at that age group, 18 to 25. Three to four percent. But many come back when they get married, and they got responsibilities, and they feel that responsibility, and they feel the need for support and guidance and community, and they look around, where do I go? And this, yeah. something that we should expect, not. Not as, a, not as a rule, but and as much as we can discourage it. But never give up on it. No. Never say, okay, it's okay for you not to go to Mass, that's all right. Never say that. Let them always think that you believe that they're not doing the right thing. Okay. Thank you, Robert. Um, you great discussion. And although we were expecting a few more people, um, I think we have a competition with adoration tonight, so we can't compete with our Lord. Uh, but we do thank you, Robert, for <coughs> your experiences and for your, for your honesty and your openness about your own family life, which always makes it quite relatable. So let's put our hands together for Robert. Do you want to talk about books? No, that's right. <laughs> Well, if they're interested, they're interested. If they're not, they're not. Because I, the, the t I'm here for the talk. That's incidental. If you're interested, you can have a look. That's enough. It's a great book called Jesus Played Marvels, a children's book. Um, Defend the Faith, which has a lot of questions and answers. A thousand and one reasons to be happy. Why it's great to be happy. <coughs> and on a few occasions I'd speak to Robert and I'd tell him what you like to say, 869, 937, like you got there, like 1,001 reasons why it's great to be Catholic, get some DVDs. If you'd like to have a look, you're more than welcome. Please tell your friends, the next session's in a fortnight on morality in the 21st century. And hopefully we don't clash with any major football games. Thanks for being here.